let's just summarize this. Most stars lie on the main sequence. Remember that was 90%, right? Okay, of these, the hottest stars are blue and more luminous, that means brighter, while the coolest stars are red and dim. Star position on the sequence determines its mass being more near the top of the sequence. So up here, I wish this color scheme is a little bit odd. I keep going to change colors. These right here would be, um, like here, look at this diagram. This is 20 masses of the sun. So that's bigger than the sun by 20, 20 times more massive. And down here in this bottom corner, this is um, 0.1, the mass, or so one-tenth of the mass of our sun. And as you go up here, you might notice that the stars get heavier, or more massive, actually, is how we would say that. All right. And so there really are three main classifications of stars. There, are, of course, are the main sequence stars, and there are the giants, and then there are white dwarfs. And we're going to get into more details in subsequent podcasts about what are the characteristics of those. But this chart really just tells us and classifies all of our um, stars. And don't forget, again, that this is an odd uh, scale on this graph where we go from very, 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 very high, not luminous to a million times more luminous than the sun up here. And down here we've got really hot at 30,000 Kelvin down to, you know, maybe 1,000 Kelvin. That seems hot, but compared to 30,000, it's not much at all. Astronomers plot the luminosity of stars versus their temperatures on a graph called the hertz sprung russell diagram. This simple diagram is critically important because it sorts the stars by their diameters. The Hertzsprung-Russell diagram is not a star chart or a graphical representation of where the star is in space, but a plot of the characteristics that a star has at that moment in its life. The Hertzsprung-Russell diagram, which is often referred to just as the HR diagram, is, so to speak, the master diagram of stellar astrophysics. It's the most important diagram that one can draw to understand the properties of stars. And it was constructed in a funny way. The HR diagram has temperature on the bottom, or what we call the x-axis, and it increases to the left, and then it has brightness uh, increasing upward, which is actually intuitively what we would, how we would plot it in the um, y direction. And I, I really don't know why it was constructed in this way, except it gives a natural progression of stars of increasing temperature to the left and then increasing brightness upward. A star's spectral classification is determined by temperature. This relationship is reflected in the diagram's upper and lower scales. The location of a star on the HR diagram tells astronomers quite a bit about it. Stars more luminous than the Sun are plotted in the upper half of the diagram and those less in the lower half. Knowing the star's luminosity combined with its temperature astronomers can plot it on the diagram and determine the star's diameter. Ninety percent of all stars plot along a main axis, known as the main sequence. Stars that fall on this portion of the HR diagram are stable, burning hydrogen in their cores like our Sun. When a star is born and it begins to contract and heat up, it eventually starts to fuse hydrogen and make helium, and that's the way it makes its energy. And it reaches stability. And the line in the HR diagram that is the hydrogen fusion line of stability is the main sequence. An old teacher of mine liked to ask, why is there a main sequence? And the answer he wanted us to give was, because stars fuse hydrogen into helium. When you look at the main sequence, think to yourself, that's where hydrogen fusion stars live in the HR diagram. The key to understanding the HR diagram is the more luminous the star is on the main sequence axis, the greater its diameter. With this in mind, we can quickly compare stellar diameters based on temperature and luminosity. Main sequence stars that are dim and cool are called red dwarfs and are plotted at the lower right end of the sequence. Because these stars exhibit both low luminosity and temperature, they have small diameters. Stars known as white dwarfs are plotted off the main sequence at the lower left and exhibit low luminosity but high temperatures. This means that these stars are of similar brightness to red dwarfs but have even smaller diameters. 
stars known as giants plot to the right of the main sequence. These stars are 10 to 100 times larger in their diameter than the Sun. They are larger and brighter than main sequence stars of the same temperature. Supergiants are very luminous stars, both hot and cool, and are plotted in the upper portion of the diagram. These stars can have diameters thousands of times greater than our Sun. Lines of constant radius can be overlaid to complete the HR diagram. These lines provide a quick reference of the diameters of the stars that plot along them. The radius scale is based on our Sun's radius. The HR diagram is a powerful tool for astronomers. By knowing a star's luminosity and temperature, astronomers can determine the diameter. So, um, yeah, folks, that kind of ends the podcast in this unit. We'll see you in class. Bye.